Hello, my name is Perla Gonzalez, and today I'll be talking about the Mexican photographer Manuel Álvarez Bravo. And right here we have a self-portrait of Manuel Álvarez Bravo in London in 1980. This next slideshow is a quote that Diego Rivera wrote describing Manuel Álvarez Bravo, and this is what it states. The photography of Manuel Álvarez Bravo is Mexican by cause, form and content, anguish, and omnipresent, and atmosphere is super saturated with irony. I basically think this really describes who Manuel Álvarez was. He was um, a photographer that tried everything, tried surrealism, did atheistics, did um, nudes. I mean, he basically tried to do as much as he could with his photography because he's really enjoyed it. But one of the things he was really amazed with and he could never get away from was his Mexican culture. If you go through most of his archives, he has mostly Mexican culture. I mean, you name it, whether it's cactuses, just a house, a person a worker. I mean, he was just basically into his Mexican culture and I am proud to say that I am myself am Hispanic and I just admire him for that. So it's just amazing how Diego Rivera could describe in these few words. This next slideshow is a little background of him and basically Manuel Alvarez Bravo was born in Mexico City, February 4th, 1902. And sad to say, he died in October 2002, which was exactly 100 years that he lived. Not many of us can say we lived that long. Um, his father was a teacher, but he wasn't happy with that. He just didn't think it was him. So he decided to pursue painting, photography, and writing. And probably that's one of the influences that triggered Manuel Bravo to be a photographer, which, to my next point, his grandfather was also a professional portrait maker. And... I mean, just hearing photography, painting, it just triggered him. He also lived behind a historic century center of Mexico City, behind the Cathedral, which meant he either belonged to the middle class or low class. I mean, either way, he succeeded. Eight years, when he was eight years old, that's when the revolutionary revolution began, and he would hear gunfires, and sad to say, at that age, he got to witness so many dead bodies, which I think this is one of the reasons why it influenced him to pursue on photographing his culture, his Mexican culture. Four years later, after that, he was forced to quit his school because his father, unfortunately, died. So he had to help his family financially wise. So that's when he started working at a French textile factory. And he works there for a little bit, but then he moves on to make uh, works for the National General Treasury, which that is amazing. I mean, he went from textile to treasury. And then at the end, just decides, you know, this is not for me. It's just not where I want to be. So I'll pursue the career of photography. And that's basically where he started, just photography. This next slide show is basically his career, uh, what he did throughout his career. He was basically one of the founders of modern photography, which not many know or don't realize it. Another interesting fact that I thought was amazing, he did not get his first camera until 1923, but even after that, he didn't become a professional um, professional photographer until the year of 1925. One of his first, like his first ever award winner was of Two Lover Birds on a boat. Um, he also, his career did not expand until the late 1920s all the way into the 1990s. Uh, decades after that, uh, during the Mexican Revolution, he was one of the photographers. He worked for them. He actually advertised for the Mexican government of what was happening. He um, later became a freelance photographer in the year of 1930, which that's also the year he quit it working for the government. Also during the year is when he met Tina Medotti, and that's when also Tina Medotti was deported from Mexico because of her political activities, which for whatever reason left Manuel Alvarez her camera and left her her job working for the Mexican Fall Wakes magazine. He also established his career in 1933, which that's when he met Paul Strand. And he met him, but he didn't work as much with him. It was just a briefly time. And later on, in 1938, is when he met the French serialist André Breton, which he was the one who promoted his work in France. 
and the way he did it was by exhibiting Bravo's work over there, which that is amazing. And also after that, he worked under uh, Breton's um, command, and he did a Mexican exhibition called La Buena Fama Durmiendo, which means the good reputation sleeping. And it was basically an exhibition of nudes, but Mexico denied it because of his content. But after trying, printing and printing so many of those exhibits, he just, you know, they went for it. Um, later, from 1993 to 1959, Bravo moved on to doing still shots for the Mexican film industry. It just work, work. And then in 1935, he exhibited with Brazon, Brazon, one of the famous photographers as well, at the Palacio de Bellas Artes. And he also decided to go for artistic books, and his first book wasn't published until the year of 1945. His last year, what he decided to stick to was nudes. He just wanted to infiltrate the woman's body. The thing that amazes me the most out of all of this is that throughout his whole career, he did 150 solo exhibitions and 200 collective exhibitions. I mean, as you can see, he did so many contributions. He worked with famous artists. Moving on to one of his pictures, here as you can see it's part of his Mexican culture, it's a house with the window and cactuses, I mean you just don't really focus, it was just a shot of a house or a window, it basically infiltrates Mexican culture by like you know you can have so many subjects and make a good picture. This next one is probably when he was focusing on artistics, it's called the instrumental, uh, I just think it's just pieces of iron and it's just like I say you collect them together and it just makes a beautiful picture. This next one is one of his Mexican cultures as well. Like you can see it's a bunch of men workers trapped onto a truck. And I just think this is very powerful because it's the workers of the tropic. And I just think it's the workers that, you know, they're hitting hard, working hard while the sun is being, banging on them. and But they have to work to provide for their families, whatever they could get, you know. It's just very touching to see this. It's also, it's a famous person we know, Frida. From what I was reading, this is a picture that he took on his studio that Frida went to go visit him or whatever, and he just probably took her off guard and just said, this is a good picture, just take it, and there you go, there's Frida. This next one is very powerful, is as you can see, you can't really see the people's faces, but you can see that these four, five workers are attached to chains in their legs, so it's like if one runs, they all have to run, it's like wherever they go, they all have to go. And it just shows that, you know, he was really to his culture, just wanted to see what they went through. Um, it was called the crouched, one, the crouched Ones. This one is when he was probably working his last year's the nudes. This is a female, which is, it's called La Desvendada, which is the uncovered one. It's probably just a female that just posing out there and, you know, working with Bravo. This next one is of a little boy. It's called The Running Boys in the 1950s. It's basically probably what he wanted to show people was what basically kids did during those years and what they did in that culture. This next one is the daughter of the dancers and probably Manuel uh, Alvarez Bravo just probably took this picture and the girl doesn't even know that it was taken. She was just probably observing the dancers through the window because she probably wasn't allowed inside. This next one is very touching as well. This was from what I was reading, the spirits of the people is supposed to represent the Dia de los Muertos which is the day of the death, which represents that you take flowers, candles, and you eat bread in their behalf, and you just celebrate the death, you know, that even though they're gone, they're still here, which is very powerful, because I myself, like I said, once again, I'm Hispanic, and I'm all into that. This next one is just sympathetic nervous system. He was just trying to show how the body of, of female looks from the inside and the outside is just all anatomy. This next one is very powerful as well. We've just been looking Christ. We know we hear the word God, religious. But this was to represent the whole culture, the whole Mexican culture, which we usually go for Catholics. We're usually considered Catholics, and it's just supposed to represent all the Catholics. This next one is the Ruins V, which is a skeleton of an animal, which this is supposed to represent victory, like how we became victorious against the Spaniards, and it's supposed to represent the decades that, you know, we're still fighting, we're still here, and we continue to be victorious. This one is another one. It's called Trapo Negro, the Black Cloth, which is probably still when he was his last year's work with nudes. It's a female with just a black cloth. It just probably shows that, you know, with just a piece of cloth, the female can still accentuate her body. This next one, once again, Frida. Frida was here at Picasso's gallery. 
and he just probably, you know, she was going through there, and he just, hey, this is a good picture, and plus, let's advertise, you know, Picasso, one of a very famous artists or painters. This one, one of the last pictures, the dreamer, El Ensueño, which is probably just a girl that he caught off guard, that seems sad to him, but for him, it's like dreams and hope, that there's the hope out there, and you know, it just takes time, but we'll get there eventually. Significance that he did, he was a self-taught photographer. He decided to teach himself on his own. Like I said, it probably had to do with his father, his grandfather being part of that. Uh, from what I was reading as well, he started doing materialist first and then moved on to do modernism. He did a lot of social documentary, like I said, the Mexican culture. Most of his prints or his processes were gelatin silver. His culture was his pride. I mean, you can see it by his pictures. He was a huge impact in the Latin America 20th century. I mean, he just represented as well. And he was actually considered the poor photography. I mean, just by looking at his pictures, you can tell that, you know, it just had a meaning to it. You didn't even have to read about it. You can just straight out see the picture and be like, oh, well, this is what it probably means. Like I said, this is basically Manuel Alvarez Bravo. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.